the hell? Pausing. I got a pile of dirt on my face. This is why I need to shave every day. All right, well, our first layer of planking is done and it feels really good to get this far. It's always like, it's like a big benchmark and I'm really happy about it. So we've been working in yellow cedar and it's been about three and a half millimeters thick to start with. And with the idea that I'm gonna dress it down or fair it out to about three millimeters or one eighth inch thick. So the next layer is gonna be sapili. It's gonna finish out at two millimeters and I've got it roughed in at about two and a half millimeters right now. So that's again, give me enough thickness to get it on here and fare it off and still have enough material there that it's actually doing something for us. Now in theory, this boat will have no fiberglass on it whatsoever. The combination of the planking running in two opposing directions, as well as the longitudinal structure of the backbone should be sufficient for this to be a perfectly strong hull, especially for what it needs to do, which is race. This is not going to be crashing onto rocks or being dragged up a beach. This is purely being raced. It lives on a dolly. It gets launched from a crane. It does its thing out on the water. And then when it's done, it gets the reverse process. It's gonna have a very light duty life, except for the part where it's racing, where it'll be under some stress. And um, we're gonna do our best to try and build this structure into it to take that stress without adding a whole bunch of weight. So that's the key here. So this is what reason we've gone with this very light form of planking. We think it's just enough to do the job. And um, of course, we always have the issues of buildability factored into it. So, I mean, I could make this even lighter, but would it really stand up? And then how long would it take to actually fabricate it if I made it much lighter? So you need to find that balance between structure and weight. Anyhow, in terms of getting started, I just wanted to show you where I'm at. So I'm gonna lay out my planking to get rolling here. And to start with, I'm just using this uh, flexible plastic batten. So this is wide, it's about the width of our planking, roughly. It's a little over that, but I'm not worried about that. So this is good for these, where I'm trying to lay out planks against these really tight bends. I mean, I could do this with my wooden battens, and I've got a couple here. We would refer to these as plank fids. They're basically representations of the plank. These are a little under thickness but I've got uh, one that's at my roughed uh, plank width, but it's not, you know, it's still too stiff to get around these bends because it hasn't been steamed. And I've got another one that's my finished plank width, roughly, I mean, we're sort of gunning for this, and that's just to help me lay out how many planks I'm gonna be putting on as I go, figure out where they're gonna go. But to get around these tight bends and figure out the exact lay of the plank, I need something that's more flexible that can conform to that hull. And we wrap them around the hull and try and get them to lay down nice and flat and conform to the actual hull. There we go. That's what's going to happen here. Now, my thinking is I'm going to start right here at the break of the um, this little transom. Of course, we still have to add a skeg onto here, and I'll do that after I've finished planking. I want to make this structural first. The skeg is purely cosmetic for the most part, so we'll add it later. And I want to start my planking here because this is the one point where I get a, a change in the length of the plank abruptly. Um, so it wraps around here, comes to the center line, but then I get planks that get chopped off here and I get planks that get chopped off there. So this is a natural place to start my run. So I think I'll do what I did before, which is start on the back end here, get these down, work my way aft, and then I'll start working forward. So I've got my planking stock here and I cut it full length, which is 14 feet. One of the things I thought about was uh, whether or not I should try and lay it up so that the grain keeps repeating through here. We would call that a slip joint or you could flip them 180 degrees and have a book matched grain. But you know what? Unless you got a big fletch of them that are all cut exactly the same that you can work from uh, that'll cover the whole length of the boat, that'd be great. I don't have that. I've got enough to cover the boat, but it's going to keep changing. So to have a bunch match here and then suddenly change over here and then suddenly change over here as I work through my stack, that doesn't make any sense. And I don't think it's going to look very good. So I'm just going to go taking one piece at a time and working my way around the boat and then moving to the next piece as I, you know, once I've used it up. And I think the randomness of that will probably work out pretty good. The one thing I will do though is I'll try and make sure I keep the grain orientation the same. And that's because once it's finished, 
if you start switching up the grain so that suddenly this plank is lying this, this way and then the next one is flopped over this way and so on, the light's going to play off it differently and it's going to look a bit weird. So I'm going to try and just keep, keep all of it consistent, always the same side of the tree facing out and the same end of the tree facing the same direction. And that's going to go a long way towards giving me a good consistent finish without trying to match up exact quick matchy type, type of grain. Now if I were building, you know, a deluxe cigar boat or something like that, absolutely we'd go for book matching it. But we're spending a lot of the money just trying to figure out how to do this without worrying about those kinds of aesthetics. And in the end, it's really not going to matter. It's still going to be a pretty boat that's going to serve the purpose, which is beating the other guys at the races. So I'm just going to take a minute to get myself organized, get the steam box up and rolling, get some planks into the tank. I'm going to pre-measure out a few with a little bit of extra length on them. And um, I have to decide whether or not I want to try and cut pairs of planks as I go, which I might do, or if I want to uh, just go one after the other on one side, do the whole boat, and then jump to the other side. And I'm really not sure which is the best solution. I think I did find when I was trying to do that before I was running into a little bit of a traffic jam where the two were coming together. So I might be better off focusing on just one side of the boat at a time. That might be the smart thing to do for me. Before I start the second layer of planking, I've set up my laser level on the load water line of the hull. This is the theoretical level at which the boat will sit at rest. Now the reason for doing this is that we're going to bright finish or varnish this hull from the load water line up to the shear. But below the load water line, we are going to paint it. Now by marking this off right now, it's going to tell me where I need to be very careful about where I place staples as I proceed with my planking and where I can use them with wild abandon in order to get this job done in a more efficient manner. Okay, this is our first plank. Let's see how it goes. So I'm going to use a backing pad. Feels nice. Okay, I think I'm good without the pad. See now the trick with getting these bends is getting all the shapes laid down the way you need them to, right off the bat, as much as possible. That's really nice. Could even stand to back it off a hair. Not sure if I'm safe to do that now. I've already missed my chance. That's a little, little stiff. I'm going to moisten it and rehydrate just a hair. You can do that. I'm popping that back in the box for just about you know one or two minutes. That bent really nicely. The only thing I'm concerned about is how much it wants to sort of lift on one edge. So I need to think about how I want to address that. And I might need to do a little bit of stapling down. Maybe I can work that, make that work for me if I can staple it down at one edge between planks. And then as I get the next one bent, slide it in there and I can get a few of them bent before I glue. That might work okay. The trickiest part here is the fact that I have to pre-bend them before I can fit them. And then once they're bent, they're a little bit harder to trim properly. So I think they're all gonna work pretty good, but we'll see. All right, I'm gonna get that out now. There we go. You can see how that almost straightened out as I re-bent it. Okay. Oh, come on. All right. There we go. Nice. And what I want to do is snuck, sneak it right up to this corner as much as I can. But it's important that I keep an eye on my angle. So that looks good. It means I gotta come up just 
just a hair forward, I think. Good. Okay, now the trickier part. This is where I'm stuck. My stapler is over there. I want to keep the pressure on here. <laughs> and I can't do both. But anyway, I, I, I can see how it wants to sort of rise up a little bit on this corner. And that's probably because I went for a bit too extreme an angle. I probably would have been better off squaring these to the shear just a little bit more. Or I might be better off even. I wish I could fasten easily right at the center line and then pull it down, but that's not really going to let me do that very easily. Now this is where the bending iron comes in, because once this is cooled down and sort of holding its shape, then I can come back with the bending iron and I can tweak it. All right, need my stapler here. So what I'm going to do, kind of is where I want it to lay, so I'm going to just quickly pin it down here. And I'm not going to staple through the plank, I'm stapling right to the side of it. I might need to hit it a couple of spots to get it to hold. I need one there. That's good. That's better. Now, there's no reason I can't staple through the plank up here, but I'm, I'm going to not do that for the moment because I have a feeling that that's just going to make more work for me. So there we go. That looks really nice. Piece of door skin over the bottom there. Those, those edges want to rise up a little bit, but I'm already anticipating I'm going to have to pin those down when I do my fastening. But all in all, that looks good. That looks really good. That one's so much easier than the yellow cedar, which is funny because yellow cedar is generally the easier wood to bend, but it's just that little extra bit of thickness can make all the difference in the world. Okay, so now I got to think about how I want to shape. So I think what I'm going to be doing is, in each case, this side of the plank will stay um, as it comes off of the, uh, the saw. And then I'll, sh I'll change up this side to match the next one, is my plan. So for now, though, I think I should be able to get another one in here and just sneak it underneath these guys. I'm going to try that, because I, I think that's going to work pretty good. So I'm going to get another plank, stick it in the seam box, and we'll tuck it up alongside here. The biggest issue is going to be down here where the uh, clamps are. They're going to get in each other's way. And they might. They might not. Let's see. It's because my plank is sitting a bit long, so there's only one place I can put my... And then my next one's got a, an angle on the bottom, so maybe it'll be okay. We'll see. All right. Come on, come on. Here's the trick always is getting that, getting that down while it's still good and steamy. That one well. So the big danger when doing this, of course, is, is the plank cools off really quickly when it's this thin. So little stumbles like I just did there are not the best. But that went down really nice. And of course I am clean out of I'm clean out of good little sticks. I'll quickly cut some right here.
Now I can already tell that I can't go very far with this simply because I am going to quickly run out of, um, I'm going to be getting too far away from my finished shape. And then that's going to come back to bite me when I try and fit everything. I got to keep it pretty close. In general, this little plan that I have of using sticks to bridge the planking and just staple in between the planks, it looks like it's going to work out okay. So that I'm happy about. All right, I'll look at another plank in the box. 10 minutes seems to be just about perfect. Oh, well, these are bending really nice. Now one thing about um, steaming is uh, steaming does have the effect of actually drying out your planks to a certain degree, I believe. Uh, and what I've noticed is you, if you put something, if you get some green wood and you need to get using it fairly quickly, uh, steaming actually is a good way to sort of push it through the drying process. Even though you're introducing moisture into the air, when it gets hot enough, the moisture that's in the plank will start to evaporate from it, I believe. Um, at least that's what the feeling I generally get. Okay, so that's looking good. I'm impressed, but I can't go much further. I think I'm gonna get one more plank out and then I'm gonna have to stop and fit these because otherwise I'm gonna start, like each one of these is probably growing by uh, an eighth of an inch further away than where it needs to be and uh, there's a point at which you're going to start end up with um, you know this one's going to fit there no problem but this one now has to come back like a good three-eighths of an inch in order to uh, find its home or even half an inch or maybe even more so you really got to sort of take a little piece at a time or else it's just gonna you know, the, the shapes are not going to jive up for you but this is going really well and I envision I should be able to pretty easily get these glued in and then keep on moving. So um, this will make actually four planks. That'll make a nice area for gluing up. That should work pretty good. Probably about four shots of epoxy. I think I'll probably start by giving myself a sur mark somewhere like in the middle here and um, like so. In fact, I should trace out this entire plank edge because this is gonna stay. And we want this to land exactly right back here. All the way down. Good. Okay, I've got a little layout thing that might be interesting to some people. I'm taking my fid here and I'm going to my boat and I'm just sketching out my plank lengths based on the, uh, the layout lines. I work my way up one side. Got plank seven there, plank eight there, and then jump to the other side, come up here, plank 9, plank 10, plank 11, and I'm just laying these out sequentially on the, on the sticks here, the, the planking stock, so um, I go all the way up to the end. When I get to the end and I need to go into the next plank though, I don't come down and start on this one, I take this one off the stack, I go down there and I start at the other end of it, and I work back the other way. And the reason I'm doing that is so that when you have these planks laid up on the boat, there's a greater chance that when you have those sequential numbers that the colors are going to come up similar. So here's plank 12, there's plank 13 off the stack. They're going to be very similar. Likewise, at the other end, uh, just in case there's a, you know, a, a noticeable color change over the length of the plank that I can't perceive right now. And um, it, they look pretty good, but there's always a chance that it, it does change up a little bit. So I think this is going to make for a better looking result in the end. This pile here is for the port side. This pile is for the starboard side. As I pull one off the pile, I flip it over 180 degrees. And that's just to make sure that I have consistent grain orientation uh, throughout the, side, the whole side of the boat on each side. All right, well, we've got the first run of planks glued up here. And everything was really looking good when I walked away last night. It was everything was tight, and when I come back this morning, I noticed that my seams are a little bit um, opened up a little. The planking has shrunk post steaming because I really didn't give it a ton of time. The planks seemed dry. I gave them a run over, 
the iron to uh, make sure they're good and dry for gluing. And I would have thought they were perfectly stabilized, especially considering this is vertical grain um, wood, but uh, obviously maybe not. So it's giving me a few little gaps. It's not the end of the world. And in fact, it's sort of, it sort of is a good thing in that moving forward, I means that I don't really need to be as careful about trying to close up the seams as much as I was when I was laying these out. I put not a ton of time, but a reasonable amount of time to trying to make sure these seams were like super tight, like really, really tight. And so that I'm bit, I'm not annoyed, well, I'm a little annoyed, but a little miffed that they ended up a little wider. But um, there's nothing I can really do about it. All I can really do is just move ahead and continue planking. So today I'm going to bend a whole bunch more wood into this area and I am going to leave it overnight before I do a glue up. I'm going to just give it a lot of time to, to cure up properly. I was really hoping I could get to the glue up stage while it's still a bit more supple, but um, I don't want this problem to continue. Although now I, don't wor I won't worry about getting it the, the blanking super tight because once I got a little bit that's looking one way, I'm kind of committed to making the rest look the same. So it's really just going to buy me a little bit of wiggle room, which is fine. And I've already talked to the customer. He's okay with little seams. He's it's not gonna. He's not gonna. He's not upset about the idea of it not being completely seamless. And I'm using a pigmented epoxy, or rather, I've made up a batch of filler that's you know really close to the mahogany color, so it'll look fine. I don't pull this out very often, but it's a convenient little tool if you have a, some repeated angles you need to cut. You can only shave off a little bit at a time, though. Now I'm about to start bending some material onto the uh, port side aft quarter here and I need to get this ready for it. So the first thing I want to do is trim back this side of the planking uh, along the center line. So I'm just going to pop my little plywood pieces out of here. I like using these small flat pry bars for a lot of stuff around the workshop. For repair work, they're invaluable. They, they'll weasel stuff apart that nothing, no other tool can do. And they, they call them glazier's tools if you're trying to ask for something. Um, the company called Richardson, which makes a lot of putty knives and stuff. They, uh, they make good ones. And I find sometimes I've got, a, I've got quite a few of them around. Some of them I've got rounded off in the corners because I find it makes them work a bit better. Some of them are sharpened practically to a knife edge. Okay, there we go. All right, so I am just using a uh, piece of scrap material here as a straight edge. And I'll just drop a couple of weights on it up at this end where I don't really, where it doesn't matter too much. Down at this end, I think I'll try putting a clamp on to hold it really good and secure. You know what, this is kind of jumping around. I think I'm gonna just gonna staple this in place. So I'm holding back from my line just a hair from my saw kerf. Go. And then up here, I've already got a few planks cut back and a few already joined, so I'm trying to align with all of those. And hopefully this should all look pretty good once it's together. So we'll start with just a utility knife, fresh edge. I'll just give ourselves a little kerf and um, now, ideally, it's on the keeper side, so I'm going to angle my knife out just a hair. And 
I'm going to use my little Japanese, don't know what it's called, saw. I really need to replace this saw because I, I use it a lot, but this one is shredded. Somebody borrowed it without my permission back when I was in boat building school and did a number on it. One thing I did do is I um, I laid some masking tape underneath the planking here so I wasn't gluing it down in the waste area. And I'll just have a little bit of material to clean up I think. Come on. There we go. should just pop off. There we go. So you see I put masking tape on the back side so that I wouldn't do any bonding to the actual yellow cedar. And there's our alarm for our plank. And so just to make sure I have what I need, I need a spring clamp, I need a staple gun. Okay. We've got to work very quickly. I'm just going to snug it right up into my joint here and staple it off on the uh, remaining staying side. And then we're just going to quickly bend that down into place. Beautiful. That went really well. And then you can see it's popping up a little bit here, so I'm just going to use my my lofting ducts to try and hold those down. So my angle, once it's bent into place, of course, my angle's not quite there. I gotta play with that. And um, I got a little bit of spring back happening over here where the sides flatten out. That's fine. I'm just gonna use some push pins for the moment to help hold it down. That looks fantastic. Of course, fit is the most important thing, like in terms of how the plank lies on the surface, not how the edges meet, because we're going to tweak those to, to fit. And then of course my most important thing here is I need to try and make sure I've got my finished plank meeting up at the other miters. So we've got to try and match those up. And that's that's really the hardest part of this whole thing is, is tweaking it to fit this guy and then tweaking it so that this little angle here matches up and hopefully it matches up with the shear too, but we can't see the shear on both sides at the same time, so that's less of a concern. That's fantastic. So I'm gonna go get another plank, put it in the box. I'm going about 10 minutes of steaming time for each plank. That seems to be just about perfect for these. And once this cools a little bit, I'll start with the fitting process right away because the sooner I get this fitted closely to shape, um, the sooner I'm gonna be able to make sure that the rest of these are getting to where they need to be or as close as possible. So back here, I've got a couple planks glued on, and then I've got a bunch here that got steamed in place and need final fitting. And what I found is, um, while there's sort of a, an urge to try and fit them soon after steaming, I do find that they ha there's enough shrinkage overnight that uh, I can fit them, but then they, they're, they're shrinking back. And this is a perfect example where I fitted a few of these planks right after steaming and um, after they've sat overnight, now I'm finding that I'm falling back behind my line here. I've got a, some gaps. You can see how this one's falling a little bit short. That one's not quite so bad. That one's a little oversized. This one, I don't like it. Certainly, this one's about an eighth of an inch shy now. This one uh, is just barely under a sixteenth shy. And the next one, I haven't, I don't believe I've actually did, done the fitting job on. No, I haven't. So, so we're good there. So I really... This one's not going to work all that well, so I think I will go ahead and make a new one to fit in there. Of course, that could potentially hold me up from fitting the rest, because now i got to steam a new one in, 
I gotta wait overnight, then fit it, and then I can finish the process of fitting and fastening these in place. So that's annoying to say the least. What I think I might do here is I might just play around with them for just a couple of minutes, um, juggle these into place and just see how badly they fall out of sync. Okay, that's a wrap for today, folks. Now, if this is your first time joining us and you liked what you saw, you might also like our other series that we're running called Building the Bushidori, and you can find a playlist for it right up here. Now, this channel is supported by viewers like you through Patreon. This week, I want to shout out to David Edmondson for joining us on Patreon. Now, if you'd like to join us on Patreon, I'd really appreciate that. You can find a link in the corner here or down in the description. And lastly, Christmas is right around the corner. How about a Nomad t-shirt? Or I sell a bunch of different plans and things like that too. So why don't you hop on over to my website up there. There's a web store or you can check out other stuff we've done in the past. And for now, we will be back next week with more planking on the 2.4 meter. I hope you enjoy it. Ciao for now, folks.